Greetings everyone. In this video we're going to explore the effects of myocardial ischemia on the EKG tracing. Let's review quickly the different components of the EKG and the different waveforms and what each represents. So the P wave represents atrial depolarization followed by the QRS complex which represents ventricular depolarization. So atrial and ventricular depolarization takes place and is represented graphically as the P and QRS complex. Following the QRS complex is the ST segment and following the ST segment is the T wave and both the ST segment and T wave represent repolarization of ventricular tissue. So at what point does ventricular depolarization end and ventricular repolarization begin? And the answer to that is in this magic point right here known as the J point. And the J point is nothing more than the junction between ventricular depolarization and ventricular repolarization. So when the myocardium is ischemic, a couple changes occur on the EKG, but most are isolated to the J point itself, the ST segment, and the T wave. So when looking for myocardial ischemia on the EKG tracing, we're going to focus on the J point, we're going to focus on the ST segment, and we're going to focus on the T wave. And certainly there will be some other changes to the QRS complex perhaps, even maybe to the P wave and PR segment and interval, but the majority of the findings that we'll have during myocardial ischemia are going to be limited to the J point, the ST segment, and the T wave. So let's explore each one of those in depth. So the first thing we want to do is be able to identify and recognize where the J point is exactly. So as we said, the J point signifies the end of ventricular depolarization and the beginning of ventricular repolarization. Another way to look at it is that the J point is where there's a departure from the QRS complex into the ST segment and T wave. There's usually an acute angle that happens at this departure point. In this case, the J point is located right here in this tracing. There are certainly some other changes in these waveforms, and we'll explore those in a second. Right now, we're just looking to make sure we can all find the J point. Here's another example, and forgive me for the quality of the tracing. I don't know why it came out that way. The J point in this case is this acute angle that takes place at the end of the QRS complex and before the ST segment. That's the junction, the end of ventricular depolarization and the beginning of ventricular repolarization. Let's do one last example, the J point. So the J point in this example is right about here. And again, that signifies the end of ventricular depolarization off to the left. And everything to the right of that point is ventricular repolarization. Being able to find the J point is critically important because we're going to next evaluate the location of that J point against other elements on the EKG trace. So in this case, there are a couple rules to follow. The first rule is, under no circumstance is it ever okay to evaluate the location of the J point against the PR interval or PR segment. It is never okay to do that because the PR interval may also be up or down, meaning that it has departed from the isoelectric or baseline, and we wouldn't want to compare two variables against one another to determine if one of them has moved. Instead, the rule is that the J point is only and always evaluated against the isoelectric line. So let me place the isoelectric line in this case, where that blue line is, and I'm also going to place a line where the level of the J point is and that's just about right here. Next what we want to do is we want to determine 
where the J point is in relation to the isoelectric line. In this case, it's pretty easy to see that the J point is well below isoelectric. In fact, it's about 3.5 or 3 millimeters below the isoelectric line. So one of the things that can happen with the J point is that the J point can drop down below isoelectric. We tend to refer this to this as ST segment depression, but in reality the better way to describe it is J point depression. Let's take a look at the other option that can happen. The other thing that can take place here, let's establish our isoelectric again. Here's our isoelectric line. Let's locate where the, where the level of the J point is. It's just about there. And then we'll evaluate the location of the J point as it relates to the isoelectric. And in this particular case, we'll see that the J point is elevated compared to the isoelectric line. And so this is the second option that can occur during ischemic change. And that is that the J point can depart from isoelectric and it can rise above the isoelectric line we colloquially refer to this as ST segment elevation, but again, the better way to describe this would be to call it J point elevation. So the two changes, J point depression or ST segment depression, or the J point can elevate, J point elevation or ST segment elevation. Both of those things can occur during myocardial ischemia. Next, we want to look at the shapes of the ST segments themselves. And one of the ways we can do that is by drawing a line from the end of the QRS complex to the tallest point of the T wave. And so we're going to do that here, and we're going to identify a specific pattern. So when we find the end of the QRS complex, it's kind of hard to determine where exactly the J point is here. So instead of looking specifically for the J point, we're going to evaluate the shape of the ST segment and T wave in its early stage to determine if the pattern of ischemia exists. So in this case, when we draw a line from the end of the QRS complex to the very tallest point of the T wave, if any of the ST segment or T wave lies above that line that we drew, that is a pathological finding that is most consistent with ischemia on the EKG. This is also referred to as convex ST segment. So this is a really important finding and convexity, convex ST segments are always abnormal. And convex ST segments are those ST segments that present with an ST or T wave that lie above a line drawn from the end of the QRS complex to the tip of the T wave. Convexity in the ST segment is always bad news. It always indicates that there's a problem and almost always that problem is an ischemic change. Let's look at some other ST segment shapes that can occur. This next one is a flat ST segment. Just as though we did in the previous example, if you find the end of the QRS complex, in this case the J point is very clearly identifiable, and you draw a line, whoops, let me go back here, and you draw a line from the J point to the tip of the T wave, if the ST segment or early phase of the T wave lie right on the line that you draw, this is a horizontal section. This is a flat section, and ST segments and T waves are never supposed to be flat. Another example of that is in this right-hand illustration. Again, I apologize for the quality of the tracing. If we draw a line from the end of the QRS complex, the J point, through the ST segment, you'll notice that that ST segment is also flat. Flat ST segments are always abnormal. So we talked in the previous one, previous example, that convex ST segments are always abnormal. And now we're going to say not only are convex ST segments abnormal, but flat ST segments are also abnormal. Flat ST segment, always a bad sign. There are only two things that cause ST segment flattening, and those involve myocardial ischemia or hypocalcemia. And so when we look at these ST segments, when we're looking at the shape of the ST segments, convex ST segments are bad, 
and flat ST segments are always abnormal findings. Next, we're going to look at the third possibility, and this third possibility, as we find the J point very clearly identifiable here, and go to the tip of the T wave, what we find here is that the ST segment actually dips below this line. And typically, when we find an ST segment that is concave, concave, concave ST segments are almost always normal findings, or they're normal variants of benign conditions. They don't typically identify ischemia on the tracing. That's not always 100% or conclusive, so it's sometimes possible to have acute ischemic change that creates a concave ST segment. In fact, this particular tracing, an example that I'm using, is from a patient with myocardial ischemia. So convex ST segments and flat ST segments are always abnormal findings. Concave ST segments are typically from benign presentations, but they can also be from ischemic change. So we have to be careful in with the concave presentation because it can be benign or it can be a more sinister presentation such as myocardial ischemia. All right, now for field providers, for folks who want an expedient method of looking at the ST segment without spending too much time on it and determining if it's okay or if it's bad, this is my recommendation to you. Draw some eyeballs on it. And so what I mean by that is find your ST segment in early part of the T wave and put some eyeballs on it. And if this frowns at you, if you get a frowny face out of it, right, this is always bad. And badness on the EKG, think of ischemia. So put some eyeballs on the ST segment and T wave. If they frown at you, that's bad. The next possibility is to put some eyeballs on those two flat ST segments that we looked at just a little while ago. Again, these don't look like very happy ST segments. Flat ST segments are also bad. Think ischemic change. So concave ST segments, our next presentation. If you put some eyeballs on this guy, it's actually pretty happy. And so happy ST segments typically mean benign condition, but not always. And so we have to be careful with this guy. Frowny faces and sad faces are always bad. Happy faces are usually benign, but can sometimes be related to ischemic change. Next, we want to look at the ST segment itself and the direction or the slope in which it's traveling. So there are three possibilities. It can be an upward or an upsloping ST segment. It can be a horizontal ST segment or it can be a downsloping ST segment. So horizontal ST segments and downsloping ST segments are always bad. And again, when you think of badness on the EKG, you're thinking about myocardial ischemia. Upsloping ST segments can sometimes be okay, but they have to be rapidly rising. You normally see this like a much more acute, almost vertical approach. You'll see this sometimes in stress testing with a person who's got a healthy heart and has a completely normal stress test. The ST segment will dip a little bit below isoelectric because there's, the person is exercising. There's a little bit of a supply and demand imbalance. And so the myocardium is just repolarizing a little bit differently. In this case and in this example, however, the slope of the ST segment is really lazy. So these three slopes that are illustrated on this chart are all bad and all indicate ischemia. So a lazily rising upsloping ST segment is bad, horizontal ST segment always bad, and downsloping ST segment always bad, always signs of myocardial ischemia. Really, really important to identify in the EKG. Last but not least, we want to look at the T wave itself and we want to see the changes associated with the T wave. So there are going to be four really important changes to look for. The first one is a peaked or tented T wave. The next one 
is going to be a broad base. Next, we're going to look for the symmetry of the T wave. And we're going to determine if the T wave is hyper acute. Now let's explore each of these independently. So when we talk about a peaked or a tented appearance, a normal T wave is supposed to have a nice gradual upslope and a rapid return to baseline. It's not supposed to look like a TP or to be peaked or tented as is the case with this particular example. The next thing we want to look at is we want to look at the base of this T wave. Look how massive and broad this T wave base is. It really shouldn't be that broad. It should be much more narrow. So a peaked or tented T wave, a broad base T wave, always tell us about a problem that's going on. Now we look at the T wave symmetry. So if we were to evaluate the T wave's left and right legs with respect to a vertical line that we draw, that wasn't very vertical, let me try that again. A little bit better. If we now evaluate this right leg and compare it to this left leg, you'll see that both kind of mirror one another. And so this talks and speaks to the symmetry of the T wave. And as we discussed up here, a normal T wave, no matter where you put a vertical line, there should be no symmetry right to left. There should be a nice gradual upsloping ST segment into the T wave and a rapid return to baseline. So symmetrical T waves are always an abnormal finding. Last but not least, we want to evaluate if the T wave size is hyperacute. And when we talk about hyperacute T waves, we talk about a T wave whose amplitude exceeds half the amplitude of the QRS complex. So if it's greater than half the amplitude of the QRS complex, we refer to that as a hyperacute T wave. And in this case, you'll see the T wave is actually taller than the QRS complex. Not by much, but it's actually taller than the entire complex. So this illustration shows us peaked or tented T wave. It shows us a T wave with a really broad base. It shows us a symmetrical T wave. And it shows us a T wave that is hyperacute in nature. These four findings are critically important to recognize on the EKG tracing because they tell us about EKG badness. Specifically, they tell us about myocardial ischemia. So what do we do with all this? And let's summarize what we talked about. So when you approach the EKG, after you've done your rhythm identification and interpretation, if you're looking for ischemic change, you're going to look for the J point. You're going to look at the ST segment. You're going to look at the T wave. Specifically with the J point, you're going to determine, is there J point depression or elevation? If there's ST segment depression or J point depression or ST segment elevation or J point elevation, these are both abnormal findings. So the presence of either one of these or both in certain EKGs is abnormal. So we're really going to want to be able to recognize that. This is an abnormal finding. This speaks to ischemic change. Next, we want to look at the ST segment itself. Is the shape convex? Is it flat? Another way to ask is, is it frowning or sad appearing if you put eyeballs on it? Or is it concave? Remember that convex and frowning are always abnormal. These speak to myocardial ischemia. And concave is sometimes abnormal, but usually associated with benign conditions. Lastly, we want to determine what the shape of the T wave is. And there are four specific things we're going to look for. The first is, is the T wave peaked or tented in appearance? 
Next, we want to inquire about the base of the T wave. Is there a broad base? Oops, I did that last time too. Is there a broad base? Next, we want to look at the T wave symmetry. Symmetric T waves are always abnormal. Last but not least, we want to look at is the T wave hyperacute? And again, that was is the amplitude of the T wave in excess of half of the QRS amplitude. So the presence of ST segment depression and or ST segment elevation. The presence of convex or flat ST segments. The presence of peaked or tented, broad-based, symmetric, and hyperacute T waves all identify the presence of myocardial ischemia.